Hi everyone and welcome back to the Motograph World Channel. My name is Mari. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hyundai Staria multi-purpose vehicle. There has been a lot of buzz around this vehicle after the initial launch of the photos, but today we're going to take an in-person look. Let's take a deeper look. I think that it's a really radical design because it's something that we haven't really seen before in Hyundai or Kia models. First of all, it looks a lot like a futuristic spaceship. That's my first impression. You have the long horizontal daytime running lamps that traverse the front side. And then beneath that, you also have a very wide and thick grille complemented by these vertical uh, lamps. I think that it really works well with the front face. And then under that, it's also complemented and supported by a horizontal design. Overall, I think it is inside out futuristic design that a Hyundai car is going for, and it's very different. Let's go over to the profile. So now we're on the side profile of the Staria. As you can see, it's very tall. It's taller than the Sedona, so you'll have a lot of uh, headroom inside. Not only that, the windows are much wider and longer, I think that that will also add to the visibility when you're inside the car. From the front all the way to the back, it's a very streamlined design with one arch all the way uh, to the back. And it also connects onto these vertical uh, tail lamps that you see here. As for the wheels, they've used a 235, 55, 18 inch wheels. So let's take a look inside after we open up the car. After you give it a little tug, it opens up by itself. It's automatic. I see here that the window, the largest window, is split up into two different pieces. Inside, I might think that there will be a hindrance of the small column, but still, you have this much space to look outside, so it will probably be uh, one of the benefits. So um, as for the width of the opening, I think that it's not too bad. Let me try getting on and off. Because you have the side steps, it's easy to get on and off, and it's quite a wide opening. Uh, I mentioned these uh, parametric lights, or the parametric pixel lights. You can see that they're made up of uh, very small squares, and you see a very wide panel uh, vertically attached. That also connects with the overall arch and the streamlined design of the car, so I quite like that point. From the back view, it really looks like a lump of clay um, because uh, there's not much detail, there's no uh, character lines running through, it's just one big block. It's also complemented with these uh, low uh, bumpers at the bottom here. Um, you see that the overall length of the car is very tall and you have uh, windshield wipers on top here hidden and now let's try opening up the trunk. But at the moment, because they've built in this row, it's quite small. If I get in, it's really spacious. I'm not sure if I'll be able to close the door, but still you have this much space. And in terms of the length, I have even more space left after I spread out my legs. It's easy to load as well because this part is very low and uh, with accessibility as well. And now I'm sitting inside on the driver's seat and it's awesome because uh, it has so much visibility because of the car. It's so tall. Um, nothing hinders your line of sight. And because everything is quite streamlined on the top part here, very comfortable to drive in as well. You have the digital dashboard on here. I like the fact that it's long in a horizontal way and it doesn't have the housing but considering a lot of the designs that have been released from Hyundai models don't have the housing and they had no problem whatsoever I think that it will be similar here as well the steering wheel is uh, wrapped around in artificial leather and it's quite slim and the texture of the tactile part is not too bad either and for the driver's seat the armrest can be adjusted and as for the comfort level it's quite hard and rigid um, you don't have that much cushion in the seats as for the headrest i think that it's quite comfortable that you have the good support and now if you look at the center fascia you have the 10.25 horizontal uh, screen that's here a very similar layout to all other uh, hyundai vehicles 
You also have the HVAC. They're in touch, so it's not a uh, press button. And you don't have anything down here. This is the Universal Island. For the Universal Island, it's very big and you have more than enough room to store your stuff. You have the upper compartment as well as a lower compartment here. I'm thinking maybe a little bit of uh, water bottles, but since it's only about this much in width, it's not that big. It's not like the Ionic 5 where you have a completely open area underneath the top compartment. And one more point is that I can actually get off the car by walking across the passenger seat. So that's another plus factor. For me, comparing between the old generation Star X and the new Staria, I think it's uh, almost a revolution in terms of design. It's become so much nicer inside and out. And even comparing with the Kia Sedona or the Carnival, I think it's even more spacious inside. So that will definitely be a plus factor. Because of time limitations, so we had to move outside to look at this model. In fact, I like this color much better. It's the black version and you see that in front you have the type of bronze, maybe slightly brownish grill and the logo or emblem attached to the front. So let's take a look inside with the second row seats. And this model, we noticed there is a difference uh, from the one inside. Here, you have the small plastic housing for your digital uh, dashboard. So right now, I'm inside the nine-seater version. So you can see that we have four rows of uh, the seats. From the Staria Lounge ones, can actually rotate the second row seats so that they can see each other while on the drive. So as you can see, we've swiveled around the second row seats so that you can face the third row seats with the second row seats. As for comfort, this is very similar to the one we saw inside. It's very much a hard type of seating. However, uh, you do have a lot of leg room since you can move the seats front and backwards. But I think that because it's a minivan, you have a lot of space, but because it's taller than the other minivans that are competing in the domestic market, you have a lot of headroom. And the windows from where you're sitting, I think that they give a lot of visibility from, for the passengers. I did mention that there is a slight column here. That's probably because these windows open up. So in order to make the windows open up, they had to put in a small slim column. But when I'm inside, it doesn't really hinder that much of the line of sight. And now let's look how far these uh, seats go. So it's quite comfortable, but as for some of the lounge models, you do have a one touch uh, auto button. Uh, which will get you to the zero gravity seats. Then you also have the option of adjusting the leg support as well as your head support. Not on this model, but the ones for Staria Lounge provide those options. So now let's look at some of the storage uh, compartments that you'll have on the second row seats. You have these little pockets behind the front row seats here. But then again, you also have the Universal Island and if you push this part out, then you have the two cup holders. You also have two USB ports as well as a uh, power outlet for 220 volts. You can also pull this part out, which also gives you even more room for storing your stuff. For the higher options and the more premium options, you have cameras that are built into the ceiling here to get a surround view of uh, the passenger seating area. But for the very basic model uh, that we're sitting in right now, you have two air vents and you also have heated and ventilated seats. So now I've moved over to the third row seats. The third row seats are a little bit less comfortable compared to the second row seats. If you're not going to be using the fourth row seats, then you can push it all the way back, which means that you'll have more room for your legs. And you can also make use of the cup holders right here. However, if you were uh, taking on people for the fourth row seats and you had to sit around here, then you'd, your line of sight would be hindered by this uh, C pillar. For the third row, you also have the air vents for HVAC. Um, they can be hidden or they can be open. 
So the fourth row seats, compared to other models uh, or other minivans out there for nine seaters, I think that this will probably be one of the more comfortable fourth rows. You can also adjust the backrest slightly towards the back. We mentioned outside that the uh, backside of the car for the white models, it looks like a block of tofu. Um, but because of that, you have a little bit of room to adjust the backrest compared to some other minivan models that say they are uh, nine seaters. Um, it's a bit more spacious. Um, and one plus side of the fourth row is that you get access to this wide window. It's very tall and wide. So uh, you compromise on the seats, but then you also have the nice wide viewing angle and the visibility. You also have the sunshades that can pull up and you can hide them down. I kind of feel like I'm riding a horse because I'm so high up on the car. Um, it probably has a little to do with the seat position that I'm um, in, but still it's very high up. And because of all of the visibility with the large windows, it's really easy and fun to drive. It, does, it almost doesn't really feel like I'm driving a car. This model is the 2.2 liter diesel engine. You really hear that diesel engine sound. And when I was sitting in the passenger seat, you could also feel a lot of the vibrations coming from the ground up. I did try the zero gravity seat position and in terms of overall ride comfort, because of all of the vibrations and the sound coming in from the car, it wasn't the most comfortable ride. So now we're cruising at uh, around 60 kilometers per hour and it's around 58 to 60. So at 100 kilometers per hour, uh, the noise or the decibel inside the car is around 63. So I'd say that that isn't so bad. Uh, it is a slightly windier day than normal, but I hear the wind and the draft sound a bit more. In terms of the overall shock absorption, uh, when I was in the passenger seat, you felt that a bit more. Um, I think from the driver's seat, it's a little better. So we did a U-turn just now, and in terms of the turning radius or rotation angle, it's not so bad because this has a very long wheelbase, the longest wheelbase out of all its competitors. So I think that will be very practical. So compared to some other competitor models, this car is the longest and it's also the tallest. However, in terms of horsepower, this has a 177 PS and the maximum torque is 44 kilograms of force meter. So if you compare these specifications with other competitors, it's not a really good contender. Um, a lot of people have been still asking about whether this will come out in an EV model or a hybrid model, but for that, I think we'll have to wait and see. So guys, what did you think about the Hyundai Staria? Overall, I think it was a forward-looking design, almost like a starship. Along with the drive, I think that it was a revolutionary advancement compared to the previous generation. Tell us what you think on your posts down below. And of course, remember to click subscribe. See you next time.